Adding a battery storage system to a solar PV installation is an increasingly popular choice for residential installations. Having the ability to store the energy generated and used later in the day and avoid importing expensive grid energy can dramatically improve the return on investment for a solar installation. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at a typical battery used as part of a solar PV installation and how they differ from other types of batteries. So let's start by comparing this SunSync 5 kilowatt hour battery with a similar array of lead acid batteries. The same ones which are used to start car engines and have also historically been used for off-grid solar applications. On average, a typical household in the UK uses around 10 kilowatt hours of electricity per day. This means that 5 kilowatt hour that we find in this battery is roughly equal to 50% of the average daily electricity used in a home. And that's no small amount. A standard washing machine, for instance, uses approximately one and a half kilowatts per load of laundry. So that's three washes a day. Not bad. If we compare that, though, with your lead acid equivalent, like the one here, which is 12 volts and 50 amp hour and weighs in at 16 and a half kilograms, we would need around eight of these to store just 50 percent of our daily usage, weighing in at a whopping 132 kilograms. Not to mention the space you need to house that many batteries. You're looking at well over a metre and a half of floor space required. Another difference between the SunSync battery and lead acid is the power density. That's how much power can be stored in the space available. And it goes without saying that you can store the same amount of energy in this battery compared with ones which weigh two and a half times more and takes up twice as much space. But what is this? Is it witchcraft and how does it do it? Well, it's all down to the chemistry of the battery itself and the chemicals used. Lead acid batteries were invented over 160 years ago and the design was changed very little. They are cheap to make and they're made of tough stuff. And for those that remember when early mornings were filled with the sound of slipping fan belts and cars bursting into life under a cloud of four star leaded petrol, we used to top up the lead acid batteries with distilled water and being very careful not to spill any of the acid on yourself or breathing in the hydrogen that it gave off. Now, although lead acid may be okay for getting your Triumph Spitfire off the driveway, its limited number of charge cycles can cause issues for using it in the home. So with lithium being able to hold the same power in a fraction of the space, it's no wonder that technology powers phones, tablets, electric guitars, and battery storage. All this is great. However, lithium does have some drawbacks with the chemistry. Lithium ion, for example, reacts very violently with air. So if cells become ruptured and damaged, this may lead to thermal runaway, where one cell damages the next and so on and so on, which can result in a fire. But there is another type of lithium chemistry, and that is lithium phosphate. If we use lithium phosphate, like the one in the SunSync battery, we don't get any thermal runaway, as the chemical composition is much more stable. Safer batteries, safer install. So can we just plant one of these batteries into any old installation? Well, sadly not, as we must carefully control the charge and discharge cycle of the batteries to maintain maximum efficiency and safety. So an inverter like the SunSync hybrid inverters would need to accompany the battery, but it still all fits in a space no bigger than your downstairs plant room with a toilet and basin in it. The connections on here are different too to your traditional lead acid. Instead of two connections, positive and negative, we have two positives and two negatives, an on off switch and an RJ45 socket. This is what's known as a CAN bus, which is another technology adopted from the automotive industry. It's an industry standard protocol which allows the battery to share its critical information such as temperature, charge levels, and even if it's overheating or any fault with the battery charging equipment. The CAN bus also allows you to connect more batteries to the system and allows each one to communicate individually through the BMS or battery management system. And because CAN bus is very reliable and not impacted by electrical interference, we always know what's going on with the batteries. Now in the next video, we're going to be demystifying some of the terminology around battery storage with a PV installation. So be sure to hit the video right here.